Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Happy Mother's Day to all the beautiful mothers in KKGC and all over the world. Today is the ninth day of May 2021, and we are here to exalt Jesus, to thank him for life, for counting us among the living today, and for the privilege, for the blessing of motherhood. So let us stand on our feet as we exalt the King of glory and welcome the Holy Spirit in our midst this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Lord, prepare me to be sanctuary, pure and holy, dry.
let's begin to worship the Almighty God. Give Him praise. Honor Him. Exalt His holy name. Thank Him for life. Thank Him that you are counted among the living today. For it's only the living that can praise the Lord. Those in the silence of the grave cannot give thanks to Him. Those in the silence of the grave cannot thank the Lord. Worship the King of glory. Exalt His holy name. Bless Him for the privilege to be alive to see this very moment. Some people were just put inside the grave right now. But you are alive. You are healed and hearty. Give Him all the praise. Worship Him. Thank Him for the gift of motherhood. Thank Him for the blessing of motherhood. Father, we exalt your holy name. We honor you for who you are in our life. Thank you for all you do for us. Thank you for life. Thank you for food on our table. Thank you for clothing on our bodies. Thank you for shots over our head. Thank you for your divine protection. Thank you for all the battles that you fight for us every day. We are so grateful. Father, we return all the glory, all the honor, and all the adoration back to the King of Zion. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now let us begin to ask for the mercy of the Almighty God. We have come short of His glory in different ways, in our thoughts, in our words, in our action. And it's only our sins that puts a breach in our relationship with the Almighty God. Our sins stops our blessings from getting to us. Now begin to ask the Almighty God to break the power of sin over your life. Break the power of sin over your life. The manipulation of sins over our lives. Father, break the power of sin over our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, everything, oh God, every filthiness in our heart, every is it unforgiveness? Is it bad biting? Is it gossip? What is it that you're struggling with? Begin to ask the Almighty God to take it away from your heart. Is it pain of the past? Father, flush it away. Clean source that we may be accepted in your sight this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now let us welcome the third person in divinity and that is the Holy Spirit into our midst this morning. Get to take his rightful position that today will be an awesome service. That today will be a glorious service. That Jesus Christ to be glorified at the end of today's service in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit will welcome you. Have your way into the service. Let Jesus be glorified in Jesus' mighty and powerful name we pray. Amen. Father, we are so grateful. We've come before you again this morning and we just want to say thank you for your kindness, for your loving kindness that we enjoy, your, ten your tender mercy that we enjoy every day. We cannot thank you. No, we just want to say me all the glory, all the uh, honor and all the adoration be ascribed to your holy name, the highest is my father in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we commit every minister that will be ministering here today unto your hands, oh God. Use them for your glory in the name of Jesus Christ. Use our vocal cord to change and touch and change lives for good in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for your servant today. Bless him, oh Lord. Empower him even more to continue to change lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, I cover everyone here with the blood of Jesus Christ and I banish every activities of powers of darkness in Jesus' name mighty and powerful name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may please be seated as I call on Sister Ify for the reading of the day. Praise God. Good morning, church. Our reading this morning will be taken from Proverbs 31, 10 to 17. Proverbs 31, 10 to 17. And I read, Who can find a vicious uh, wife? For her word is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her. So he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil. All the days of her life, she seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant sheet. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and a portion for her maid servants. She considers a field and buys it. From her profit, she plants a vineyard. She guides herself with strength and, strength, and strengthens her hands. This is the word of God. Praise 
the Lord. One more time, I want to welcome everyone into the presence of the Almighty God this morning. And I say happy Mother's Day again to all the mothers in the house and all the mothers all over the world. Now it's time for praise and worship. It's time to exalt the King of Zion. If you're excited to, to be in God's presence this morning, jump on your feet. Put on your dancing shoes and join us as we worship the King of Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Tell somebody, today is the day. Today is the day. I, I didn't hear you. We can do better than this. Absolutely, Sister Ify. <laughs> Tell somebody beside you, today is the day that the Lord has made. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us sing unto this Lord. This is the day of joy. The day of joy. The day of joy. This is the day of joy, the day of joy, the Lord has made.
of our faith yes, to say Lord. to him, Father, we appreciate your kindness. Yes, <laughs> he who sees the end of a thing from the beginning, yes. he knows about this day and he knows that motherhood will be celebrated yes. all over the world, yes. that a day like this will come. Yes. Because we have watched him perform this wonder mm. from many years to today. Mm. <laughs> I've discussed with that atheist at my job and we are talking about, he started arguing about many things about God. I said, I want you to tell me the mystery of having a baby. If you can tell me how the white blood cell will be planted and within 10 months we have a human being with a bone, with eyes, with mouth, and shaped and look like you and I then we have a discussion. But if you cannot be able to explain the mystery behind it, then you are fighting a big battle. You are fighting a battle that is bigger than you. The law made it possible. And I like that song that says, Yes, you are the law. The most high. And he said, Yes, you are the Lord. If anyone stand against you, you overrule. Most high, my father, yes, you are the Lord. Let the living worship him right now. Most high,
want you to begin to worship the Lord. If you are a product of a mother, I want you to worship our Father and give Him praise. Exalt His holy name and worship Him. What an awesome God. What a wonderful God we serve. My goodness, my goodness. The one that has created this ministry and has created a wonder. He created them and made them an incubator. He created an incubator and placed it inside a human being. Woo! The world is counting more than 7 billion today. Ah, I'm telling you, all these more than 7 billion, they are not a product of big banks. They all pass through a system. They were incubated inside a mother's womb. And at the due date, here we are. We took delivery of 7 point plus billion on the face of the earth. Give God praise. Father, we worship you and we exalt your holiness. The King of glory, the God of procreation, the God of divine multiplication, the one that has established this blessing for mankind. We bless your name, be exalted, ancient of days. All glory belongs to you, my Father. Be glorified. I am that I am. We worship you, Lord. In Jesus. Mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. I want you to begin to bless God for the blessing of motherhood. I want you to thank God. Starting from your mother. Thank God for your mother. Thank God for your mother. I know many said, oh, that woman is wicked. She's that and that. Yes. But if she is all that, you may not be here because she would have killed you in the womb. If the babies that have been aborted are crying today, I am telling you, if you made it, you have to honor the Lord. <laughs> Apart from those that they are born deliberately, what about those that miscarried by the attack of the wicked? Because the enemy knows that the destiny that is coming is great. That through this one, through you, through this one that is about to come, that God will shine the light and the enemy attacks and they miscarry that child. But here you are, you and I, we are a product that have faced challenges when God planted us in the womb. But the Lord said, this one you cannot abort. Yes. I will make sure that this one will come in into the earth, will live through the earth, will do his purpose on the earth, will change lives on the earth. Look at the beauty and the glory we have all over the world. They are product of mothers. Father, we give you praise. Thank God for your mother. Thank God for your mother. Thank God for your mother. And if you're a mother here, thank God for yourself. Yes. Thank God also for single mothers. Thank God for foster parents. Give God praise. Beauty and blessing he has made. Father, we bless your holy name. We are so grateful. Thank you for motherhood. We honor you. And thank God for every woman. Thank God for every woman. Because inside every woman, there is a mother. <laughs> Father, we bless your holy name. Be glorified. There is no segregation over this. The day the Lord said, her name shall be called woman. And Adam gave her the name Eve. That day, the Lord sealed the covenant. That procreation and multiplication will continue on the face of the earth. What a blessing. Father, we give you all the glory. Thank you, Lord. That is when I look at every other form of union, I say, this is faulty. This is lie. This is lie. This is faulty. It's Adam and Eve, man and woman, and we have procreation. Every other formula is a lie. Father, we thank you for what you have done in creation, and we are here to celebrate it. We give you glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Follow me. The book of Genesis, chapter 1, said... Then, 28, then God blessed them and God said to them, I'm talking about Adam and Eve. He said, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the earth, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Meaning, God has established, finalized, and said, this is what I want to be and this is how it's going to be. If you look at this altar, you have a bowl of fruits. 
Meaning, today also, it's not only celebrating motherhood, but we are also to activate and partake on the power of divine multiplication. The power that cancel and disgrace barrenness anywhere, anytime, any moment. Amen. So, Amen. on this altar, I want yes. you to pray and speak to God and ask him, Oh God, let the anointing for divine multiplication, the anointing that disgrace barrenness, fall upon me and overflow in my life. Can you talk to God? Just ask him, Father, let the anointing, the anointing of divine multiplication, the anointing that cancels and destroys barrenness of any kind, let this anointing rest on me. Let this anointing come upon me. Let this anointing overshadow me. Let this anointing rest on me. The anointing of the Holy Ghost. The anointing that comes to every form of barrenness. The anointing of divine multiplication. I receive it. Yes, Lord. Let the anointing for divine multiplication rest on us. We give you praise, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you because you are more than able. And you are glorious in all your ways. We worship you, my Father, and we bless you because you are a progressive God. Father, in this service, O oh God, let every mother in King of Kings Global Church, anywhere there are, those that are in-house and those that are watching online, let them partake of the blessings that you have released. Let the ministering angels, the spirit of covenant you have assigned to bless mothers today, let them minister to everyone, anywhere they are, oh God. And Father, as we continue in this process, Lord, you say today you are going to abolish, you are going to destroy, you are going to cancel and stop the power of barrenness. That we may prosper and multiply as you have ordained. Father, let this power that you have activated, oh God, overshadow every soul and bless us in all ramification. We thank you, Father, thank you, for your God. kindness and your mercy. All yes, glory God. belongs to you, my Father. Yes. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 You may please be seated in the house of our Father as I call on Sister Uzioma for the announcements. Good morning, church. Happy Sunday, everyone, and happy Mother's Day to our mothers. This is KKGC Weekly Announcements. KKGC Weekly Service, Tuesday, May 11th, 2021, is our weekly Bible study and prophetic service themed Divine Encounter with the King. Join our virtual service with Cisco WebS app on your phone or tablet. Every Tuesday is by 7 p.m. Click on the app and use this number to join. 126-744-4918. 126-744-4918. Ladies on fire. Wednesday, May the 12th, 2021, KKGC Extraordinary Ladies will be having their monthly prayer line meeting. Join them to pray for fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit upon your life. Time is 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. And the prayer line number is 712-770-8019. 712-770-8019. And the access code number is 826-939. 826-939. Call upon me. Our Thursday's weekly fasting and prayer, which is 1 day 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., is scheduled May 13th, 2021. And our prayer line will be open same day at 8 p.m. We are praying for the Lord of Harvest to release fresh anointing upon KKGC and her royal families. The dialing phone number is 712-770-8019. 712-770-8019. And the access code number is 562-097. 562-097. Family and Friends Counseling. Our one-on-one -on -one virtual family and friends counseling starts this Wednesday through Friday, and we continue till we get to the last family. Watch out for the schedules, and as soon as you receive your notification, kindly respond accordingly. Our head shall not lack the anointing. We shall be having an anointing service every Sunday in May 2021, 
Next Sunday, May the 16th, is anointing for breaking broadline and self-inflicted causes. May the 23rd, anointing for igniting my gifts with fire. May the 30th, anointing for prosperity. Get ready for overflow of God's blessings. Evangelism, so winning, so winning. He or she that wins so is wise, Proverbs 11.30b. So winning is part of our duty call as disciples of Jesus Christ. Let's continue to share the hope of salvation and bring uncountable souls out of darkness into the marvelous light of Jesus. Invite at least one person with our online service link this week. Last but not the least, online services. Our live streaming is now on Facebook and YouTube at the same time. Like King of Kings Global Church page on Facebook and subscribe to King of Kings Global Church Network on YouTube. Please use this info for your evangelism and send it out to your family and friends. Service time is 10 a.m. USA is 10 standard time. This is the announcement. Praise the Lord. It's time for us to take the hymn this morning. Please, I want you, wherever you are, if you have bulletin, you can get one. For those that are watching online, you can look at the screen and join us as we take the hymn.
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. This morning is with great joy to thank God again for each and every one of us, especially the mothers of this day. God had mercy on Adam while Adam was in the garden hopeless, trying to figure it out. God had mercy on him and blessed him with a woman. And God did not tell him everything until procreation started. Now Adam understands, okay, I understand that this is different category. So that's what we are celebrating today. And I thank God also that as journey of life have been, that in infinite mercy of the Lord, he has blessed me with one. Amen. And we thank God for the first lady of King of Kings Global Church. Amen. And this morning, I want to yield the platform for her to mount the podium and speak to us the word that God has developed inside her to speak to the mothers and every one of us. Please, I want you with joy to give a clap offering as the first lady takes over the podium to minister this morning. I'm so excited and I'm so blessed to be in God's presence this morning. And just one more time, I just want to say Happy Mother's Day to all the beautiful, amazing, gorgeous, extraordinary, <laughs> victorious, virtuous women of KKGC. Amen. And I also want to use this opportunity to say Happy Mother's Day to my beautiful mom, my beautiful mother-in-law, and of course, my amazing twin sister. Happy Mother's Day to both of you, the three of you. You've been so amazing in my life. You've changed my life in one way or the other, touched my life in one way or the other. I love you and I appreciate you. And to all the women all over the world, I just want to say Happy Mother's Day to you all. You are blessings to the whole world. Hallelujah. Amen. Before I continue, I just want to also thank our Father in the Lord, the prophet, my mentor, my pastor, the love of my life, my husband, my ally, my co-liberal. I just want to say thank you for the opportunity you have given me to be ministering to God's people. And thank you all for allowing me to minister to you today. Can you please stand with me? as we honor the word of God. Stand on your feet as we honor the word of God. Open to the book of John 8, 12. John 8, 12. And it says, Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have light of life. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Shall we bow down our head as we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness, kindness, and mercy in our lives. And I thank you for the great privilege to be ministering to your children this morning. Father, as, your, as the book of Hebrew 4 verse 12 says, that your word is, like, is a life and it's as sharp as two-edged sword and penetrates into the spirit and soul. Therefore, as I speak your word today, let it penetrate into the deepest part of their hearts like a two-edged sword. Melt in their heart, mold them, heal them, deliver them, save them, uplift them, change them, and of course, bless them. Holy Spirit, I yield myself to you this morning. Use me as a vessel to communicate the mind of God through the word to the hearts of your people for your glory and to the shame of the devil in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The topic of my sermon is the purpose of a mother's light. I just want to say that mothers, we mothers, we are blessings to the world. 
We are great gifts to this world. And Jesus Christ has made us light to shine on this earth. He has made us light to represent him on this earth. As mothers, you just wonder why they call the earth Mother Earth? Because mothers multiply. That is our duty. Our duty is to multiply. Every great man or woman in this world, somehow in one way or the other, refers to their mom as their backbone. Yes, they say, oh, my mom, oh, my mom, my mom, my mom. Mothers are great light. We are, we are, I don't know the best word to, to explain us, but we are blessing to this world. We make this earth. It's through us that people are born. It's through us that we have great people in this earth. We have men and women. Even though God has given the men, you know, the leadership to lead us, but then we are the light of the world. He has put his light in us to shine forth for him. As a mother, we nurture. One of our characteristics is that we nurture. When we reproduce, when we produce this kid, we give birth to them, we nurture them, we breastfeed them. We give them their first food, the first food that they eat, and that is a breast milk. We give them their first food, we are, like, we are their first teacher. We teach them the first thing that they learn even to talk, whatever they do. We are, the first people, we are the first people that teach them. We are their nurse, we are their doctors. Anytime our children are ill, we pamper them, we check their temperature, we give them uh, medication and all that. So we are their first, whether they like it or not, we are their first doctor, we are their first nurse. We are also their first drivers. Sometimes we carry them on the back. If you say your mom never carried you on your back, my mom did. She carried me on her back and moved around. You know, and you said, oh, she didn't carry me on my back. Yeah, well, she was carrying you on her hand or her, on her arms and moving you around. So she's your first driver, whether you like it or not. So our mom, mothers, are, I don't know, they have a lot, of, a lot of greatness in them. God has deposited a lot in mothers. He has deposited wisdom. He has also deposited favor, grace, the spirit of discernment. He has given them a lot. Remember the story of Mary when we birth to Jesus. The angel of the Lord came and said, you are favored. So our second name is favor. And the Bible said, when a man finds a wife, he has found a good thing and obtained favor from God. That means you already, you are married to favor. You, expect, you should be expectant of favor. So we carry favor. God has given us a lot. He has endowed a lot into us as mothers. We bear the children and we carry them, we give birth to them, we nurture them, we teach them a lot. I can go on and on and on. That's why we said, Jesus Christ has made us light to shine where there is darkness, to shine forth. Mothers, we are powerful source of God's light. We are powerful source. I, if you believe that, say that to yourself. I am a powerful source of God's light. That is what we are, mothers. And in light of that, I want us to go straight and just, you know, find out the meaning of light. And what is light? Light is electromagnetic radiation with a portion of electromagnetic spectrum that can be perceived by human eyes. In other words, light helps us to see. Light gives visibility. It makes things visible. Light shines. Light illuminates. Like if you come into a place where there is darkness and once the light comes up, you see everything. So we have different categories of light. We have the decorative light, the kind of light that you see in, um, in the weddings, decorative lights, you know, um, like the one on my back, this one here, they are decorative, like they are so beautiful, they sparkle, they shine, you know. People always um, um, admire them. They bright, they glow. That's one of the kind of lights. And some mothers can also be referred to as a decorative light. What does decorative light mean? They're just there, they're beautiful and they glow. And these mothers that glow, that, you know, that are decorative, they are, they are not really impactful in the inside, but they just glow, they just shine. You know, they, are not, they don't really radiate, they don't really uh, illuminate. 
They don't make an impact in the lives of people. All they do is shine and glow. So some mothers can be seen as um, a decorative light in the sense that they are kind of people that carry grudges in their heart, people that gossip, that talk down on people, you know, that, uh, I don't know, that those things that is rebellious, you know, those are the kind of people, that, that's the way to kind of describe a decorative light or in line to mothers. Some mothers can be that way. They don't make an impact in the life of their children, in the life of their families, in the life of their spouses, in the life of people around them. All they do is, you know, look down on people. They don't see good in people. They talk down on people. They gossip. And their children are there learning all those things from them. And what did the Bible say? Whatever you do, these children, they are learning. Do you know that they, what your character is what they pick up more, even faster than even what you say? Your character. And some, one, some, uh, maybe some mothers tomorrow, they'll say, oh, my child is not behaving well. My child does this. My child does that. But there are some of those things that she, that child must have picked from you. And you're saying your enemies are at work. So they're kind of, they're mothers that, you know, they don't make an impact in their community. They don't make an impact in the life of people around them. They're just beautiful on the ice outside, but not impactful in the life of people in the inside. Now, the second one is tax light. And tax light is the kind of light that glows, that Im illuminates, that shines, like the kind of lights that we see uh, up the ceiling. These are what we call the tax lights because they are, they're so shine, they are so bright that you can see even the pin on the floor. You can see anything through this light. It can be the floor light outside. Those are... Uh, um, Tax light. Tax light could even be your car light because your car light helps you to see clearly to be able not to hit other cars. Maybe at night you can see clearly. We can refer to that as, uh, you know, tax light. Kitchen light, for instance, the ones you have on your island that you can use to see everything, do your bakeries or pastries or whatever, prepare the food, cutting the, and washing the dishes and all that. Those kind of lights illuminate, they shine. You can see clearly through this kind of lights. So, and some mothers can also be referred as tax light. And these are the kind of light Jesus is talking about. These are the kind of mothers that Jesus is talking about. The mothers that make impact in the lives of people around them, in the lives of their children, in the life of their community, in the life of their society. These are the kind of mothers we are talking about, Jesus is talking about. Because when they shine forth their light, people will see Jesus Christ in them. When they shine forth their light, people will see Jesus Christ in them. And how do they shine forth their light? Through their characters, through the word of their mouth, through their conduct through the way that they dress, through the way that they speak, and things they do, the way they behave, the way they comport this, themselves. That is how they shine for their light. So number one is to exhibit, the purpose of a mother's light is to exhibit kindness. The purpose of a mother's light is to exhibit kindness to people. To your family members, to the needy, to the poor, to the orphanage, to the prisoners, show kindness. And the book of Proverbs 31 verse 20 says, the woman, in, the woman God was talking about in the book of Proverbs, she extended her hands to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She opens her mouth with wisdom and her tongue is with kindness. You show kindness to people, not just to your loved ones, not just to your family members or your spouses, but to people around you, to your society. Let them see that kindness in you. And then they, when you exhibit that, then they see the light of God in you. Another one is humility. And I always go back to the basis for the, um, for the mothers. The book of Ephesians 5, 22 to 25. And it says... Wives, submit 
to your own husband. As the Lord, for, the, for your husband is the head of the house, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands. Husbands, love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. So we're going back to the basis. You know, some of, some of us mothers want to rub shoulders with our spouses. Why did God even say women should submit? Because they know that women, most of us, we don't submit. We are stubborn. Some of us, before our husbands would say when we are staying 10 or 20. We need to submit. A man love, that's what number one thing a man expects when you he submit, you honor this man. He will love you. In fact, he will show you so much love. When you love him, when you submit to him, when you honor him, he shows you so much love. And men want peace in their heart, heart, in their house. Give them peace. That's one of the things I discovered. Men loved peace, peace of heart. They need that peace to be able to do things. Because the way we are wired is different from the way the men are wired. And another one is our good works, our morals. Let our good work, our morals speak for us as mothers. That's the way we live our lives. The way our light illuminates. The way as Christians, as Christian mothers, the way we dress, the way we make decisions, the way we comport ourselves. I'll give you an instance of two employees. So these two employees, they were, they, they're not paying, they're not being paid too much at least. I'll say five figures, but not too much. So one of these employees, she, she, she makes use, very good use of her income. She bought house, she bought car, with this same income that the other one receives with her. And the other employee is, wa is wondering, how come you're making so much more than me? How come you're making so much money more than me? Uh, you're, making, um, you're making an impact with your money so much more than me. And the other one said, and he, she said, that the Christian, the Christian one, that the second one said to her, because I pay my tithes. And she said, how do you mean? He said, I give God 10% of what he gives to me. I give him 10% of what he gives to me, and he makes the rest meaningful for me. So some people will say, ah, every day I get this kind of pay. But at the end of the day, I can't even, I can't even attest to what I did with this money. It's gone. I can't even save nothing from it. Because you're not doing the right thing. You're not giving God his own part. When you give God his own part, he will make a way for you. He will make the remaining 90%. He said just 10%. He will make the remaining meaningful for you. You see yourself doing a lot with this remaining uh, uh, 90%. And he said, if I cannot trust you with this little, and then every day you're asking God, promote me. I will need promotion. I need raise. I need more uh, uh, business ideas or whatever. God will ask you, I gave you just, I, have, I still have somebody that gave me a testimony. She said, oh, it was, this was a painful seed. She was giving it even though she knew that that money was, was going to be useful for that thing. But she was deliberately giving it to God all the time. So one day God said to her husband, Tell your wife that it's time for her pay, her reward. That he has watched her, even though this money was so little, and she needed it that one, but she sacrificed it and she kept giving back. That he's going to promote her. He's going to bless her. It wasn't a few days later. The, somebody, one of the supervisors um, left the next time. She was only a few months in the uh, office in that particular job. She was just a few months old there. And the next thing they called her, we're making you the supervisor, just like that. She's like, what? Said yes. And the, the boss told her, have you kind of sat down to think about how 
God can be. It's like the supervisor is a Christian. I said, uh, the manager or the CEO, the owner of the company, rather, said, have you even think, thought about it? How God has brought you here? Because even when she was going for that interview, it was something that she didn't want to do. She was like, I don't want to go for, I don't, I don't like this particular place. I don't want to do, but somehow she said, okay, let me just, Answer them. Let me just pick the call and do the interview. She said, do you know that we're desperate for you? Even though we told you we'll get back to you, but we're pushed, we're being pushed like, should we call her back the same day? Usually we'll give like a couple of days and reach back to them. But somehow God promoted her. Just her, the, her increase went so high from <laughs> small employee to supervisor. So what am I saying? Let people see the light of God in you. In everything that you do, it's, this one is a very good example for those that do not pay their tithe. The lady said, oh, wow, come and tell me about this, your God. The employee, the other employee that was asking her, well, how do you do it? She told her, because I have God and because I pay my tithe. She said, okay, please, I want to know this God. Now, she has seen the light of God in her. She has seen what the light of God can do. So that's one example. Taking us to the uh, Second Timothy one one to five. If you're there, you can read. Second Timothy one <clears throat> one to five, New King James. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God, according to the promise of life which is in Christ Jesus, to Timothy, a beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank God whom I serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did. As without ceasing, I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you being mindful of your tears that I may be filled with joy. When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you, which dwell first in your grandmother Lois, and your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded, is in you also. Praise God. Hallelujah. So this is, it just, it's just like an, an illustration of a mother that left a legacy, or mothers that left legacy that they have had to be referred to. So here, I'll give, I'll use myself an example here. So when I was growing up, some um, one time in our lives when we were very young, as young as um, seven, eight years old. So my dad, uh, you know, took us home to the village to spend some time with my grandmom. That was how we learned the language, actually, the Igbo language, because my parents were so busy and all that. So we spent a couple of um, years with her, you know. So when then uh, my grandmom is somebody that doesn't, you know, she doesn't, she's so hard working, like she doesn't rest. We have to <laughs> literally beg her to rest. She does not rest. So if you're living with my grandmother, you must be hard working. Is that bad that when she, mama is sleeping and you're moving, maybe, you, maybe you're eating for instance, she'll be watching you and she'll say, mm-hmm. she wants you to walk immediately after eating. Like, get busy. After eating this food, just get busy. Or sometimes, there was one time she, she was always, you know, singing for me because she likes the way I was hardworking as well. Too. I'm the kind of person that, oh, if she's cooking, I will go to her. Mama, let me pound the ose. She will give me ose, I will pound. Or let me basia the ogo. She will give me, I will do it. So she was, I was always wanting to do one thing or the other. So she liked that because she liked people that are hard working. Is on her like she's sleeping, you're moving. What will you do? Totalize just a palumuna. Who say mama? But you're sleeping now, sleep. Must you even be sending message even when you are sleeping? <laughs> That's how bad it is. So she likes to send message. She like, ah, be on your toes, be doing something. So so she was always singing the song for me. Um, I'll be dancing as little as I was. I'll be dancing. You know, you know all those things, they happened. They were prophecies. 
I was little, but I heard her sing those songs. And I'll be dancing to it. <laughs> After sending me messages, then I'll be, she'll be singing for me and praising me. You know, I'll be dancing to it. But at the end of the day, all those prophecies, all those things she was saying, is happening in my life. It was like play, but it's happening. Here I am in the Obodo Ibo. Here I am with the wonderful, the great man that God has blessed me with. So, you know, those things, what am I saying here? Teach those children, those kids of yours, the way of the Lord, that they will not depart from it. You can imagine how cool would it be for mama to be in heaven right now and be standing by, um, uh, you know, be standing by Jesus. And Jesus is saying, look at the, the child you trained for me. Good job, mama. She kept a legacy. So ask yourself that question. How about if I exit tomorrow? If I leave this earth? What would be, what would be the legacy that you're going to leave? on this earth? What would be the legacy? What would people know you as? A good mother? A bad mother? A virtuous woman? A kind woman? A woman that is there for people and helps the needy? What would they know you for? Or when they talk about you, they'll say, mm, that woman, please, don't, I don't want to hear her name. What will people know you for? And that was what Paul here referred to in this part of the Bible, where he referred to, to Timothy as the son to that woman, Eunice. You see, he referred to them because they kept a legacy. And people, and people are like, oh, wow. When people refer to your child, when you leave this earth, when they refer to your child, what would they refer to that child? As? Oh, the mother of that, what? So she left a good legacy. And I can imagine how, mama, how happy mama will be in heaven with Jesus Christ, knowing that the legacy she kept is moving on. And another one is, as a Christian, shine your light to people around you. Look at the Samaritan woman that Jesus met at the well. You know, she was there fetching water, and Jesus Christ said, give me water. And she said, oh, we're not supposed to mingle with you. You know, and all that. But the lady, after some time, Jesus Christ told her everything about herself and told her, I will give you the living water that you will never be thirsty again in your life. And this woman, in fact, she was something, something came into her and something also left. Jesus Christ blessed her and she ran into the town and was talking to everybody. I met the Messiah, come and see, come and see. That was a way she, she was evangelizing. She was telling the world about Jesus. I met the Messiah, I met, he changed my life. And that same day, a lot of people were curious and a lot of people came back to Jesus that day. Souls were won that day. And can you say, oh, I don't know how to evangelize. I don't know how to, you know, um, win souls. I don't know how to do that. It's very easy. This, uh, this Samaritan woman, she was, <laughs> she was not a Christian, but look at the way she was able to evangelize. Why? Testimony. Her testimony. You can tell people out there, oh, Jesus did this for me. He changed my life like this. Let them see that light in you. Let them see that goodness in you. And by so doing, your, the person will be like, oh, let me, I want to meet this, your Jesus. I want to be in contact with this, your Jesus. And before you know it, you're winning soul. So your testimony is a way of winning souls and bringing the children of God back to the kingdom. Amen? Amen. Am I talking to someone here today? Hallelujah. So another thing I wanted to talk about is our children. For our children, remember what the Bible says. Proverb. 22, 15, he said, foolishness is inbound up in the heart of a child. The rod of correction will drive it far from him. Now, God has given us these children. We are like, you know, we mothers are like nannies. They are God's children. The kids that he has given us, they are God's children. He has given us these kids and entrusted them in our, in, in our hands to take care of them. 
And if anything happens, you will hold you responsible. If that kid end of, at the end of the day did not make heaven, you are responsible for it. Because he has entrusted these kids in your hand. You are like his nanny taking care of these children. You must show them the way. You know, in the society where we live now, children, young adults, they don't reverence God. They don't acknowledge God. So that's why we have to put them in our prayers. Our duty as mothers is to stand in gap for these children. Show them the way of the Lord. Teach them the way of the Lord that they will not depart from it. Train them, discipline them, cancel them, talk to them, evangelize them. And when you do all that, they will never depart from it. When they do the wrong thing, discipline them. You know the Bible says, use the rod. <laughs> and in the society where we are, they say, uh, no, you can't, use, um, you can't hit them, you can't do all that. But the Bible, because we believe in the Bible, have to work with the word of the Lord. We have to discipline our children when they do the wrong things. <laughs> I'll give you an example. <laughs> you know, my, um, my brother and my sister, we're just three of us. We have an elder brother, and my twin sister and I. So this is a very faithful day, or rather, my twin sister and my brother, they're like cat and rat. So they, they don't agree at all. I was always on the peaceful side. Stop, they're always fighting, always fighting. It's not to each other, it's each other, you know. They're like cat and rat, they don't agree. Then I'm always the one in the middle, stop now, stop, peaceful. I'm the peaceful one and the quiet one. So one very faithful day, they were, and my mom is always separating fight every day. So what she did one faithful day, she carried, they were fighting, even to the extent that in the midnight, then we used to sleep on one big, very big bed. My brother, Nana, in the middle. So usually in the middle. So when her leg, his leg mistakenly touches her, she will wake up and they will start <laughs> fighting. <laughs> oh my God. So one faithful day, my mom carried both of them. They were fighting that day. She said, okay, you want to fight, right? No problem. She carried the both of them to one room, locked the room, sat down there with her tally, and said, Nuba, Nuba, no go. fight, start fighting. <laughs> And <laughs> they were like, they were, she said, no, if you stop, I will flog. And anybody that stops, she will flog the person. If you stop, I flog you. <laughs> so they were, they kept like, mommy, we are tired, we will fight again. I won't do it again. I said, eh, you will not do it. I know you won't do it again. That's why I'm flogging you so that you will not try it again. When you remember the, the Italy, you will not try it again. And they're like, mommy, please, now we'll fight again. She said, mba, no ba no go. Fight today. Fight. Continue fight. And she sat down there with them, and they fought, and they were tired. They begged and begged, and she let them go. After that day, <laughs> not the person tell them now. <laughs> they never fought again. In fact, they became best friends. <laughs> oh, Lord. So, you know, we have a way to treat these kids. Does not mean that even before you, you, you flog them with the my we call it the tale. Yes. For those that don't understand, Cain. So, you know, before you even flog them, go to the book in the Bible, Proverbs 2 15. Go see her. Huh? Show them. Look, you know what the Bible said in Proverbs 2 15? When you misbehave, flog, rod. Even the Bible said flog, uh, rod. I'm even. You know, being nice, I'm using a tally, which is fair. Then my father had Kobokun. He was an army, he was behaving like an army, army man, but he was not in the army, though. But he used to have it in his car. Oh, but when he comes back, oh, yeah, can each other who, who look for each other's trouble. And then my sister said, hey, she, she could, he beat me, she, he did this, he did that. <laughs> and my father would say, well, go and bring the tally that suits you. Go and plug the tally that suits you, that is your size. <laughs> And that's how, you know, he will use it on you. And but that koboko, ah, he, always, he uses it too, very well. So what am I saying here? He taught us discipline. He disciplined us so well that we were even so scared of him. But somehow it helped. 
It helped because those things that we're not supposed to do, we're mindful of them. And I can remember sometimes my father would call us and sit us down and open the Bible and teach us the Bible. Are you doing it for your kids? Does your kids see you read the Bible? Does your kids see you pray? Because they're watching you. Those things that you're doing is what they watch. So discipline your children in the way of the Lord. Yes, you have the right to discipline them. Teach them the right things to do. They have to listen. They have to understand. They have to respect their parents, the youths. The Bible says that honor your parents, your father and your mothers that your day may be long. And we're not just talking about mothers. It's not just mothers that, you know, train these kids. The Bible also refers to the fathers. Because some fathers, they abandon the work for the mothers. They're like, mm, go and meet your mother. Go and meet your mother. Go and meet your mother. It's always like that. <laughs> Sometimes when my kids come and they're like, they go to their father. He will say, go and meet their father, your mother. I'll say, eh, eh, go back to your daddy. <laughs> I'll say, no, daddy, let them go back to you and talk to you about whatever it is. Sometimes I deliberately send them back to their daddy. So he said, train them up in, his, in the way of the Lord that they will not depart from me. Instead, it's better for you to hit that child and that child be corrected than leave the child to, to find his way to hell. That's what the Bible says. You can look that up in the book of Proverbs 23, verse 13 to 14. And now where I was talking about the fathers, the fathers in the book of Ephesians 6, 4, and it says, and you fathers, do not provoke your child to rot, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the Lord. Train them. He said, train them. So the work is not just for the mothers. The fathers, too, you're responsible. Some people, you know, from where we, Africa, where we come from, they just believe that uh, it's only the women that are responsible for the, you know, the, for the kids. But the, the fathers are also responsible. The Bible has said it, made it clear here. You have to train those kids. Both of you have to come together. It's both of you that had these kids together, that came together to have those kids. So you must be part of their life. You must train them as well. Because father's voice is very strong. Some things I'll be saying, they won't listen to me. But once they hear their father's voice, also, everybody scatters. So evangelize your children. Sit them down. Teach them the word of God. You know, do you know that a child, a child may be good in character, or, oh, you're paying their school fees uh, in the best schools, they are doing the best, um, they're having the best grades, they, good, they have good characters, they are going to church. But still, do you know that all these things can be happening in their life, but they do not have Christ in them? They don't have... Christ in them. They are not born again. You haven't led them to Christ. And if you're saved and your child is not saved, God is going to hold you responsible for these children. They don't have the Christ in them. You're not teaching them the word. They don't see you read the word. They don't, you're, you don't evangelize to them. Your character tells, you know, they, they watch, they watch, and they copy whatever you do. A child may, be, may have all those characteristics, but still do not know Christ. Talk to them. Sit down and talk to them. Let a, a lady know that she's a lady. Let a man know that she's a man. God is not a man that he lies. He knows what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. He was smart when he created man and woman. Teach them the right things of the, of the Lord. Let them grow with it so that they will not depart from it. I'll use an example again for my, my sons. Uh, as young as they are, we always pray with them. Like every morning, their dad, um, their dad lays hands on them. He speaks into their lives. He anoints them. Me, basically, every night before I lay my, my head on my bed. I can't even sleep. I don't sleep well if I don't do that. I can't sleep. I go to their room and I lay hands on them, and I pray for them. You know, I make sure that they are covered. 
That's what I do every night before I sleep. I must do that. So one very faithful night, I just told everybody, to your room, to your room. I was so tired. To your room. Then I tucked them into bed. So I was about to leave. And so bitch went, Mom. I'm like, mm-hmm. Uh, prayer time. I was like, wow. At least he remembers. Let it become part of them because he knows this is time for prayer. Let it be part of them. Let the Holy Spirit pray, intercede for them, stand in God for them. Ask the Holy Spirit to take care of them, to take over their life. Let them accept Jesus into their heart, into their life. And then I said, oh, don't worry, I'm coming back. I prayed for them. And usually, as you can see, Sister Pauline, you know, so the way he runs out from the children's section just to share the grace. Because it's part of them. The little that you teach them, teach them. Let them learn. Let them know. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, they know that, okay, we have to thank Jesus for life. The little that they, you, when they start from infant and start learning the word of God, he runs out. He knows it's time for grace. He's, if, you, if you watch today, just watch out. He will run out again to share the grace with me anywhere I am. He will find me to share the grace. So it's part of it. You need to, so you, need to you know, let the children know these things. Amen? Amen. Am I talking to someone today? Yes. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to conclude by saying that we have to pass on a good legacy to our children. I give an instance of my grandmom, um, in line to the book of Timothy 1, 1 to 5, about Timothy, how Paul, you know, referred to Timothy, in line to the good work his mom and his uh, grandmom did. You have to pass on a good legacy. It's our responsibility to raise a generation that knows and fears God. Because we live in a society where they don't even reverence God. The young ones, they don't take God personal in their life. They haven't accepted God into their life. They need the Holy Spirit to guide them. It's not enough that they do all those good things. Let them know God so that when you leave this earth, your children will be known for that, to shine that light. Let it continue. Let it be generation to generation. Make sure that they are saved because you are accountable to them. When you exit from this earth and you go to heaven, God is going to tell you, ask you, the child that I entrusted in your hand, what happened? You are responsible for them. And it's not too late. It's not too late. Some of us may say, oh, we're not able to do all that. You can still shine forth your light in the lives of your children. God is counting on you. He's counting on us mothers to reserve our generation so that they can preserve their lives. You can just look that up in the book of Deuteronomy 6, 1 to 3. How you have to be able to keep a good legacy for these children, to carry, to imbibe. Let them follow the good steps of their, their mom. Shine for that light into their life. There was one very faithful day. My son, Sobechi, and Ifechiku, they were in our room. And um, they, um, the light went off, like general lights in the whole community went off. Like, we we'll call it up Nepa and uh, back home. So the light, light went off. And they were screaming. Mommy, 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 it's dark in here, it's dark in here. Mommy, where are you? I'm like, oh, just hold on. Stand where you are, I'm coming for you. Don't, do not move, just stand where you are. So I found my phone that was right beside me. I was in the bathroom and I found my phone, quickly found my phone that was right beside me. I turned on the lights, the flashlights and the phone and then I started flashing it. What was I doing? I was shining for this light to these kids for them to come through into the light. Amen? Amen. You didn't get that. I, I thought Jesus, you should have given Jesus a clap for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I said, it's a good illustration. Shining the light. Shining for this light for these kids that they may follow that path. And I'm like, okay, come on, keep coming. Keep coming. Follow the light. Come into the light. Come to the light. Follow the light. Show these kids the light. Let them see the light of God in you through your character, through your conduct, through the words of your mouth, through what you say, through your behavior. They are watching you. They are learning from you. Let them see the light of God in you. And it will help them and their future. And for the single ladies that are not married yet, this is for you. Do you know that the partner, the man that you marry today or tomorrow could determine your future? Could determine your future because <laughs> it could determine that your future and the future of your children, what your children can become tomorrow. If you marry, okay, for instance, let me use an instance of um, a goat does not give birth to a lion, right? A rat does not give birth to a cat. When you when you, you plant a mango, you don't expect to reap a uh, pineapple. When you plant a banana, you don't expect to reap an apple. So when you get married to a man that does not fear God, that does not love God, that does not have the fear of God in him, that does not reverence God. The Bible says, do not be equally yoked with an unbeliever. Because when you are equally yoked with them, <laughs> your, your marriage is ministry of uh, prayer. Instead of praying for blessings, you are praying for, hey, that man, hey, God, this man, this man, this man, God, where is he? Let him come back. This man, hey. That's why you'll be praying. The man will be, you'll become your life, not the ministry of praying for the man all the time. That's what you end up doing. Instead of praying for, the, for peace in your family, instead of praying for blessings, breakthroughs, you are carrying this man is your number one prayer point. Then you keep praying. And um, when you are going this way, he's going this way, and your children end up going astray. They can't. You're not going to church, it's not going to church. You're going to church, it's not going to church. And those children, their lives can, will not be balanced. It's going to affect their life, their way of life. Marry, choose right, be wise. Oh, I'm going to change him. Eh, if I marry him, I'll change him. I'm called for him. I'm called to change him. No, you can't change anybody. <laughs> marry right. Marry right, choose right. You can't change him if you think you're going to change him. You end up praying and praying and praying and praying every day. He will be your number one prayer point. Because he's going to be doing differently from what you're doing. Your life can never be... In fact, your life will turn upside down. Your children is going to impact in their life somehow. Because in a way, he's staying be. So be mindful, a word for the youth. Be mindful of the man you marry. Be mindful of the man you choose. Do not be equally yoked with an unbeliever. Amen? Amen. So in conclusion, I would say, mothers, bring your children in the way of the Lord. Give them the light. Shine for the light on them. Let them have the knowledge of God in them. As mothers, we are light. We are God's light source to our children, to our families, to our generation, to our communities, to our uh, society, to the world. As mothers, we must have a good relationship with God to be able to shine forth that light. You must have a very strong relationship with the Almighty God. Live your life in a way that people will see your way of life, we will see Jesus in your way of life. You have the responsibility to shine your light to your children. 
The purpose of your light is for the people, people out there to see what they couldn't see without you, without your presence. I said, the purpose of your light is for people to see what they couldn't see without your presence. Give God a clap for that, please. Hallelujah. When your, your children see you talk down on people, when they see you insult people, when uh, they don't see you doing the right things, you know, reading the Bible, showing them the way of the Lord, teaching them the Bible, learning all those things, you know, it becomes their normal. They, they, they're not used to it anymore. It becomes their normal. They wouldn't want to do all those things. And then you're forcing them to do it. When, when you wanted to, you were supposed to start at infant. Start from the, like when they were baby, start. Read to them. They will hear. Tell them the stories of the Bible. They will understand. They will learn. And they will grow in it. So to mothers, in conclusion, to mothers that are frustrated right now, hold on to the light. To the mothers with special needs, and feel isolated, hold on to the light. Jesus sees you. He knows everything, and your reward is coming. Hold on to the light. To mothers that feel like the light, their light is dimmed. My light is dimmed. As in, it's, going, it's going down. I'm tired. I can't do this no more. Hold on to the light. Jesus sees you. He knows you. Hold on to the light. Are you that mother that feels that you don't even have a light at all? I don't have a light. I need the light of Christ on me. Because the light of God gives peace. It will give you everlasting peace. Hold on to the light. Jesus is the light. Allow him into your heart. Allow him into your life. He is the light that shined in darkness. Hold on to the light. Are you that person that wants to come out of darkness? Maybe you are in darkness. You just want to come out of darkness to the marvelous light of Jesus. Jesus Christ is waiting for you today. He's here for you today. And for you to have his light, you must have a good relationship with him. You must have a good relationship with the Almighty God, with Jesus Christ, to, for you to have the, his light in, in you. Because he said that his light, he is light to the world. That when, when you have his light, you will walk in his light and you will have an everlasting life. Hold on to the light. Are you that mom that needs light for your kids? Oh, my children. Oh, I didn't start on time. Oh, I feel I failed as a mother. Oh, I didn't do this, what I was supposed to do in the lives of these children. Jesus is telling you today that he's here for you. Hold on to the light. Hold on to the light. Tell someone, hold on to the light. Tell the mothers around you, hold on to the light. Hold on to the light. Jesus is here for you today. And he's here to give you light. Or even if you're not a mother, Father, young adults, anyone here that feels that you need the light of Jesus Christ in, in you. Jesus is here for you today. And he's asking you to hold on to his light. And do you know the best way that you can enjoy the light and the peace of God? Is by accepting Jesus into your life. Accept him. Open up your heart. Open up your heart. Let him come in. Let him into your heart. Let him into your life. Let him into every area of your life. And he will see you through. He will break that darkness in your life. Say yes to Jesus today. Say yes to Jesus here today. Can somebody say yes to Jesus? Yes, yes to Jesus. Are you in the dark? Are you frustrated? Yes. Are you feeling lonely? Are you feeling deserted? Hold on to the light. Are you feeling my light is dimmed? 
hold on to the light. Jesus is the only one that can give you a bright light. A light that will lead you to everlasting life. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we please stand on the, up on our feet as we take this prayer point? Now pray after me. Before we take the prayer point, I just want to use this opportunity to tell you today that Jesus is up to something in your life. He's about to do something new in your life. He's about to release his light into your life. And guess what? When he's about to do, when he's up to something, he's up to show off with you. You didn't hear me? I said when he's up to something, to do something great in your life, he's up to show off with you. Do you understand what that means? Because when his blessings abide in your life, when his blessings flows in your life, when his blessings saturate your life, <laughs> people will ask you, who is that God that you serve? Who is your God? Let them see Jesus Christ in you. If you're that mom or that person, it mustn't necessarily be a mom, and you want to give your life to Christ today. You want to enjoy the light of God that brings peace and love. This is an opportunity for you. If you wish, you can come to the altar. If not, raise your hands wherever you are. You know, when you raise your hands up like this to heaven, it's like a little child raising up her hands or his hands for his mom to pick him up that's what you're about to do now ask the almighty God to pick you up raise your hands to him and say father and say father father my father pick me up I'm your child pick me up cry unto him it is the child that cries the loudest it is a child that cries the loudest yes. that to receive that attention yes. immediately. Now cry unto the Almighty God this morning. Cry unto the King of Glory this morning. He is here today for you. Jesus is here to give you a light. Jesus is here to give you the light. Jesus is here to give you an everlasting light. Lift your hands to Him this morning and ask Him, my Father. Release your light upon my life. I feel darkness everywhere. I feel frustration everywhere. My father, I feel, I want healing. Whatever it is that you are asking from the almighty God, please, Lord, have mercy upon me. I give my life back to you today. I rededicate my life to you, my father. I rededicate my life back to you, oh God. Take me, use me to change lives in this world, not just in the life of my children, in my family, but in the life of people around me, in the life of the society, in the life of the world. Let them see the light of God in me. Let them see the light of Jesus Christ in my life. I want to be that light that shineth in the darkness. Oh God, please shine forth your light on me. Have mercy upon me. I accept you today as my Lord and Savior. I rededicate my life to you today as my Lord and my Savior. Use me. Use me. Use me fight. Use me for your glory. Use me mightily for your glory and to the shame of the devil. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now let us pray. Repeat after me. The light of God that disgraced darkness the light of God that disgraced darkness shine upon me shine upon upon every mother here shine upon every upon every child here shine upon every father here the light of God that disgraced darkness shine upon me this morning in the name of Jesus Christ let my inner light let my inner mind receive the light of God's presence. Let my inner mind receive the light of God's presence. Pray, pray, pray. Someone pray in this morning. Begin to pray. Let my light of God receive your presence. Let the light of God receive God's presence. Let my light receive God's presence this morning. Begin to pray. Pray right now. Receive the light of God.
God, I can feel it. It's saturating the environment right now. Just open your hands and receive it. In the name of Jesus Christ, let me carry the light of God anywhere I go. That wherever I speak, step my feet, the light of God will dispel every darkness. In the name of Jesus Christ, pray for the light that you carry the light. Let people see the glory of God in you. Let people see the light of God in you. That wherever you step your feet, the light of God will saturate the environment. They will know that there's a daughter of Christ that is here. They will see the light and the glory of God upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, my Father, my Maker, let the light of every mother or woman. I'm also, I'm not just talking to mothers here today. I'm also talking to the young adults, the women, because there is a mother in every woman. There is a mother in every woman. The little girls, the little child, the little ones, the upbringing ones. Begin to pray right now. Begin to pray. Let our every mother experiencing any illness. You know, when our mothers, when they give birth to us, sometimes because of you know having a lot of children and all that, we they start you know experiencing one illness or the other. Maybe due to the birth of the child, you're having one you know complication, and at the end of the day, they have leg issues, rheumatism or whatever. One sickness or the other in their bodies. Now let us begin because they they carried you as a child. They bore you. And now they are carrying that sickness at the, in the process. Begin to pray for every mother that is having one sickness or the other in their bodies right now. I pray for divine healing, oh God. Release your divine healing upon them. Touch them, oh God. Touch your hearts. Touch their bodies. Wherever you're having any kind of ailment, begin to touch that part of the body right now and receive the healing of the Almighty God. Receive the healing of the Almighty God. Receive the healing of the Almighty God. Let the hand of God, the right powerful hand of God, be released upon you this morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Any mother battling with any issues of life. I don't know what our mothers are going through, but I know they are going through a lot. They carry a lot of burden. The kind of burden our mothers carry. The kind of burden that women carry. I end up giving them blood, high blood pressure. We carry a lot. This is time to begin to pray for your mother. Begin to pray for this woman. That that issue of life she's going through right now that God will see her through it and that she will come out of it a better person that God will take out these issues take away the problem because he said come to me all ye that labor and I will give you peace I will give you rest give them rest my father give them peace my father give them inner peace my father in the name of Jesus Christ and to all the single ladies that are due for marriage we're not, we're not leaving them aside we're praying for them today that the Lord will locate them yes. my father the single ladies that are due for marriage look at them oh God look at them my father and give them their own Mr. Right that man that you have prepared for them give them let that man look at them the right man let him look at them this morning this moment in the name of Jesus Christ amen, amen. And our children, we have to pray for our children. Our children shall work and grow in the Lord, in the way of the Lord. Peace and grace, wisdom of the Lord shall be their portion, shall be upon them in the name of Jesus Christ. The, and you can look that up in the book of Isaiah 4, 54 verse 13. And it says, all our children shall be taught by the Lord and grace shall, shall be the peace of our children. Amen. 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 And from infants, oh God, the word of God will, will not depart from them. Our children will hunger for the word of God. Let our children hunger for the word of God. It's not too late. You may say, I'm the mother. Oh, I don't think I failed. Or I think I failed. No, you haven't failed. It's not too late. You can still bring that child. Oh, it's an adult. No, you can still bring this adult back to God. Even a grandmother, they, they say, oh, they're useless, they're nothing, we, we just help them around, they just, it's more like they're useless. No, they are not. They're not useless because, you know why? Their prayers are powerful. 
Even though they are seated in one place, you help them to move around, to do things. But they can still talk. They have a mind. They can still pray for you. Their prayers are powerful. Let us begin to pray for our mothers. Begin to pray for our mothers. May the Lord bless them. May the Lord give them peace. May the Lord save them. May the Lord heal them. May the Lord uphold them. May the Lord lift them high. In the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever our children do, they will prosper. Our children shall bear fruits. Good fruits. In every season. It doesn't matter what season. But they shall continually bear fruits. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you are a waiting mother right now. Right here. Put your hands in your womb. And begin to pray. Begin to pray for your unborn children. Begin to pray and receive light for these unborn children. Begin to pray and receive the light for these unborn children. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I also just want to say one more thing to the youths. Your mothers, you don't know better than them. Some of us feel, oh, we know better than them. These mothers, they've gone through a lot for you. What if, what if the best gift you can give your mother as a youth is to give your life to Christ. That is the best gift because she will have peace when she has the earth. She knows that my son is in good hands. My child, my daughter is in good hands. She has given her life to Christ. That is the best gift you can give that mother. You can even go right now, give her a hug. She needs that hug. I love you, mom. Give your mother a hug. Speak good things into her ears. Bless her. Thank her. Appreciate her. Love on her. And most of all, the best gift you can give her is to give your life to Christ. Jesus Christ, save me. That's all you need to say. And he will come. Let him into your heart. Let him into your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do better than that. You can do better. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is good. All the time. Thank you, the mother of KKGC, for giving us the undiluted word. We thank God for the inspiration been writing thinking around the clock catching as much as i can we thank god we pray that she will continue to grow in the grace and be a mother bearing many fruits as the lord has called her to serve amen, amen. praise the lord hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. i want us to if you can as on this altar, we have two elements. Today is the day of divine multiplication. I have oil on this altar. And this oil will rest on each and every one of us. Before we partake of this edible fruit on the altar for the covenant of fruitfulness. So as the oil cancel and destroy the yoke and the power of the enemy. We are going to partake of this. Prayer has been said over this. We fasted and prayed on it. And I know that God will cancel every form of barrenness in our life by this impartation. Amen? Amen. We're not going to take too much of your time. But I just want to, where you are, please, if you can, be on your feet. If you cannot... You'll just be in position of prayer because we are going to pray a few prayers. The prayer that we are going to pray, I will read a word. For those that are watching online, you can see it on the screen. And the word is from Deuteronomy 7, 12 to 14. And after I read this word and finish, we are going to pass through the altar one after another. And I will minister the anointing before we partake of this. Praise God. Deuteronomy 7, 
12 to 14. And I will read 13 and 14 first before I go to 12. And he says, that's 13, then it, sorry, and he will love you and bless you. He's talking about the Lord. And he will love you and bless you. Let me make it customize. Let me customize it. And the Lord will love King of Kings Global Church and all her families and bless us and multiply us. Amen. He will also bless the fruit of our womb Amen. and the fruit of our land. Amen. Our grain and our new wine and our oil, the increase of our cattle and the offspring of our flock. Yes. In the land of which he swore to our fathers to give us, we shall be blessed above all peoples. There shall not be a male or female barren among us amen. or among our livestock. Amen. If you believe it, shout a big amen. Amen. Then look at the, the secret. 12, verse 12 said, Then it shall come to pass, because you listen to these judgments, and keep and do them, that the Lord your God will keep you, will keep with you the covenant and the mercy which he swore to your father. So the Lord is saying, I will do this, but the result is in obeying my word. In honoring me, as you obey my word, I will make it happen into your life. Amen. What is the difference between our life and unbelievers? It's very simple. We obey the word of God. And when you obey the word of God, Jesus said, righteousness, peace, and joy in the spirit is the way of the kingdom. When you obey the word, he says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his, his righteousness. righteousness. And all, all these others. things will be added unto you. Yes. What are you seeking? Yes. When you obey the word of God, you don't need to pray too much. Mm -hmm. When you obey the word of God, you don't need to cast out demons. Mm -hmm. When you obey the word of God, you don't need to worry about many things that people worry about because the forces, the power of the kingdom and the blessings of the kingdom shall come at will in your life. Amen. So, and part of it is the Lord has commanded that we shall be fruitful and the multiplication we shall multiply. Yes. Why are we praying this prayer? Because we have seen the devil try and the working hard and the stopping some from multiplying and from being fruitful as the Lord has blessed them. And today, we are not praying alone for those that are believing God just to have a baby and carry the baby. No, we are praying for every form of barrenness to be terminated. That is why we have enough of them on the altar because I'll make sure that everyone will get. We are canceling every form of barrenness yes. because you may have children, but if you are struggling in your career, in your finances, in your marriage, in your health, is a form of barrenness. In fact, any side of your life that is not producing, there is a demon of barrenness in charge. Yes. And that is what we are here to kick out. Mm -hmm. Under the covenant and the anointing of motherhood, because when you remember a mother, you remember progress. You remember multiplication. You remember the favor of God. So today, as we stand, I want you to begin to ask God, Father, have mercy upon me. The only reason something will not happen in your life after this prayer is saying, it's only if I have had sin in my, it's only sin that can withheld the blessings of God upon my life after this prayer. Talk to him. If you have sinned, you sinned against God, not against anyone. And when you ask him, he will hear, he will forgive, and he will show you mercy. Father, have mercy upon us. Let the blood of Jesus Christ wash. In any way I have sinned, in any way I have fallen. Father, I am in your presence. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. I renew your spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence. Father, take not your Holy Spirit from me. My Father, I am in your presence, O God. If you forsake me, who will accept me? If you abandon me, who will accept me? You are my Father. I have no other. I have no other God but you. Father, I am in your presence. Let your mercy speak for me today. Are you praying? Let your mercy speak for me today. Father, let your mercy speak for me today. Because I need to be free from the power of barrenness. I need to be free from any form of barrenness. Father, let your mercy speak for me today. 
My Father, let your mercy speak for me today and set me free. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. You have to address the enemy right now. I want you to pray. You, the spirit of barrenness. You, the spirit of barrenness. Uh, you are not talking to a gentle spirit. You are not talking to one who is a friend. You are talking to a demon that have refused to go. And there are ravaging things in your family and in your life. You have to speak. You, the spirit of barrenness. You, the spirit of barrenness. You, the covenant of barrenness. You, the covenant of barrenness. Holding my life and my family down. Tormenting my life and tormenting my family. I am not your candidate. Therefore, in the name of Jesus. Come out in all your power and get out of my life. Get out of my family. Get out of my destiny. Get out of my calling. Get out of my career. Get out of my business. Get out of my health. Get out of my family. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ. Get out in the name of Jesus. Covenant of barrenness be broken right now. By the power of the anointing. In the name of Jesus. Begin to speak. Father, in the name of Jesus. Begin to speak. Let every covenant of barrenness be broken. Let the power of barrenness be terminated. Let the power of barrenness be destroyed from the root. Let the influence be destroyed permanently. By the power of the Holy Ghost. That after today, there shall be signs and wonders. To confirm the goodness of God upon my life. Begin to speak over your husband. My husband shall not be barren. My wife shall not be barren. Begin to speak over your children. Call them by their name. They shall not be barren. Yes, they shall remain fruitful. In the name of Jesus, they shall be fruitful in their destiny, in their life, in their calling, in their ministry. In whatever they lay their hand to do, in their marriages, they shall be fruitful. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Unless the Lord build a house, the labor in vain who build it. Unless the Lord guard the city, the watchmen stay awake in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow. For the Lord gives his beloved sleep. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. Like arrow in the hand of a warrior, so are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man or woman who has his or her quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but shall speak with the enemy at the gate. Father, as we partake of the oil, which represent the anointing of your spirit, I ask that the power that you deposited inside this oil, as it comes on us, will move from our head to the sole of our feet yes, to crush and terminate every entanglement and any bondage yes. holding any man or any woman bound especially against multiplication fruitfulness in their life as we partake of the fruit my father let our life blossom. Yes. Let our life begin to advance. Amen. Let us begin to multiply Amen. and see fruitfulness on every area. Every dryness yes. in our life is coming to an end because of the command of the Lord. Be fruitful and multiply. So shall it be. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let the power of the Holy Ghost yes. Fall on me, anointing, fall on me, anointing, anointing, fall on me. I want from the back. Anointing. In the name of Jesus, today we put an end to every form of barrenness.
Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Father is by your instruction. Yes. About to distribute the fruits. Everyone that receive it, my father, barrenness shall be Amen. in their past. Amen. In the spirit and in the physical. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, let the prayers yes. and the prophetic unction, the word that you have spoken upon this, as we partake of it, let signs and wonders take place in our life. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's not by works of righteousness, yes. but by his grace alone. It's not by works Woo! of righteousness, but by his grace alone. I said, it's not by works of righteousness, but by his grace alone. Oh, yes. I am complete. In him. Oh, complete, 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 complete in him. I am complete in him. But by his grace alone, it's not by works of righteousness, come on. By his grace alone, it's not by works of righteousness, but by his grace alone. Oh yeah, I am complete. It's not by works of righteousness, but by His grace alone. It's not by works of righteousness, but by His grace alone. My Lord, I am complete. Oh, complete, 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 complete. I am complete. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I want you to begin to give God praise yes. wherever you Thank are. You, Lord Jesus. Your life will never Thank remain you. the same. Yes. In the mighty name of yes, Jesus, Lord. you Amen. will never Lord. remain the same. Yes, In Lord. the precious yes. name of Jesus Christ, yes, Lord. your life will never yes, remain Lord. the same. Amen. In the mighty name Lord. of Jesus, Amen. it's not by words of yes. man, but you will see it in yes. action. Yes. Because it is settled. Yes. It is settled. The power that God has released inside this fruitfulness in every area of your Amen. life. Amen. 
fruitfulness in yes, every God. area of your life, Amen. and so shall it be. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's time for offering in the sanctuary. We're going to receive it because the man said to us first, the man is ready to deal with us. <laughs> I can smell good things in the house. Please, I'm not going to hold this anymore, but we have to honor the Lord with our giving as we move into the next item. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 6 to 8, and it says, But this I say, beloved, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he or she purposes in his or her heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver, and the God is able to make all grace abound towards us, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Beloved, it's time for us to honor the Lord with our tithe, with our seed, with our offering, we are about to bless the King of Glory right now. I want you to package your tithe, your seed, your kingdom investment as we worship the author and finisher of our faith. What are we talking about tithing? Tithing is God saying, give me my portion. Just bear it in mind all the time. Don't look at tithing as a struggle. God is saying, I am the one that bless you. Give me my portion and take the rest. It's a win-win situation. But if you refuse to do that, the Lord is reminding us that there is a spirit called canker worm, called caterpillar. Their job is to devour. They are not doing anything. All they are doing, they are looking for people that do not honor the word of God and they go after their finances. I am not the one the Bible says. That's why God said, if you want a tame mammon, give me my part. And where are you giving it? You are investing in God's vineyard. You are giving it back to your creator, the one that bless you, that he may multiply and give it back to you. If you have your offering, can you be on your feet? We are going to honor the Lord with it. I want you to speak a word. You're giving your tithe, you're giving your seed, you're giving a covenant seed. I want you to pray, speak a word on it. Ask the Lord, Father, as I honor your word in giving, let there be a new order of prosperity in my life. As I worship you today in giving, my father remember my seed and bless me. As I honor you, my father, let something new, let something great, let something special happen in my life. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you for the opportunity. As we sow, my father, into your kingdom, that the work of God may continue. Ask us, bring in your tight and I will bless and make you. Father, accept it and pronounce your blessings upon us in mega dimension. Accept it, O oh God, and use it for your glory. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to sing and I want you to dance. Remember, this is Women's Day. I want you to dance from where you are. You cast your offering and you will go back. And I want to lead in this. Amen. This kind God, though, I never see your typo. This kind God, oh, blessed be your holy name. Oh, this kind God, oh, hey. This kind God, oh, hey. I never see your typo. Thank you. 
Can somebody shout hallelujah? I want you wherever you are, I want you to lift your hands towards heaven and begin to worship the Lord and bless him. Honor the Lord and give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Exalt the Lord, magnify him. Adore him for he is good. Give him all the glory, give him all the honor and bless his holy name. For the entourage of blessings, I see entourage of blessings following and coming into our life. I want you to mark today, mark my word, mark my prophecy. There's an entourage. Uh, it, it, let me tell you what, what is happening, the way it is. We, we walk in into the church, but before you leave, you have your own cart. It's like horses that has been assigned. And they carry inside it some treasure box. And inside those treasure boxes are answer to your prayers. They demand the things that you are believing God for. Amen. And uh, what the Lord has done is, as you, as we share the grace, your angel, the angel assigned to deliver, will carry it and follow you home. Amen. Please, I am begging you, avoid any anger or anything that will make you angry from now to seven let me repeat from now to seven days avoid anything that will make you angry or make anyone angry avoid either of them if you avoid this and maintain a pure heart with praise what I am saying many of you will have a revelation of confirmation but what I saw I'm telling you the angel that is taking your cart of blessings home, Amen. they are waiting. As soon as Amen. we share the grace, they are going home yes. with you. Yes. Amen. Because they have been assigned to go home with yes. the blessing. Why are they here? Because we have prayed over this service. Yes. And the God honored this service and said, I will deliver yes. into their life that that keeps them awake. Yes. Yes. Be watchful. <laughs> I always say this as I'm giving this prophecy I'm not sweating or bouncing or shouting but you will have it delivered Amen. it will be delivered Amen. Huh. then we know that if you see the invisible you can now do the impossible yes. Father we thank you because you are mighty and powerful yes. we honor you because you are with us yes. thank you for your blessings on thank us you, we honor you and we give you all the glory for your love yes. upon us I ask, O oh God, let the blessing of motherhood, the blessedness of motherhood, Father, remain and increase in our church Amen. in all dimensions. I release from this altar, my Father, that no mother in this church or any woman, even the young ones, because inside every woman there is a mother. Yes. I pray that each and every one of them that their destiny shall not be aborted. And I pray that we shall not cry over any woman in this church. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. That is the hand of the Lord. 
yes. shall remain upon them yes. in health, in longevity, Amen. and also in prosperity. Amen. I release kingdom prosperity yes. for our mothers, the women Amen. of this church. They will be billionaires and millionaires. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Amen. I pray, oh God, Amen. for shaking in the name of the Spirit yes. that the women of this church, yes. Father, not only that they will be mothers of destiny, they will also do great things yes. in the kingdom of our Father. Amen. We thank you for what you have done and we bless thank you. you. Lord. Nobody should jealous them about this. I have released this blessing yes. and they cannot be revoked. Yes. So shall it be. The power behind it is fire and any power that tries to contend with it shall be consumed. Amen. I speak again that the mothers of this church, the women of this church, they will be millionaires and billionaires. Amen. They will be owners of businesses. They will be yes. CEOs yes. in yes. the mighty name of Jesus Amen. Christ. And no power can cancel it. Through yes. their hands, God shall build and raise and do great things yes. in this church and beyond Amen. for his glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 This pronouncement is sealed. Amen. Amen. This pronouncement is sealed. Amen. I prayed and as the prayer move up, I see a closure and I ask why the Lord said, my pronouncement has been sealed. Amen. Father, we thank you, thank you for Lord. honoring this word. Yes, I have sent out the arrow of the word yes. and it shall continue to prevail. Yes, Not today, as long as King of Kings Global Church is in existence and Jesus started in coming. This pronouncement shall remain permanent. Amen. Amen. Mark today's day. Today is May 9th, 2021. May the 9th, 2021. Let us count from now to five years. Mm. <laughs> Father, we give you glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. For it is done. Yes. May your name be exalted. Yes, I Lord. cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. Lord of Jesus Father, Christ. thank you. We thank you for the men. We thank you for everything they have provided us. Father, to honor our women, I pray you bless them yes. and let celebration continue in our yes. life, in our Amen. church, Amen. in every area of our life. We Amen. give you praise. Thank, Thank you, yes. Father. Thank in you, Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 May we share the grace in fellowship. May, May the, the grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the love, love of God, God and, and sweet fellowship of the Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit be with us now and, and forevermore. forevermore. Amen. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the presence of the Most High God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please remember that Tuesday we are on the platform. We are discussing about the anointing in this season on our prophetic encounter service 7 p.m. this Thursday. The virtual platform will be open. Join us. And the Lord will bless you then. On Wednesday, the ladies on fire, the women of this church are praying for the fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit in every area of their life. Assess and join them also in this prayer line with the number and the access code. If you want to review, you can go back to today. Someone is on online, on YouTube, on Facebook. You can partake of it. Then on Thursday, we are fasting again. Remember that our family and friends counseling is open and is easy. As soon as you are complete in your scheduling with your friends and your family, let us know by communicating through our 240-444-3411 and your counseling you. will be scheduled. It's happening already. Uh, this counseling is happening Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. As soon as you're ready, let us know so that your family will come into the virtual platform. Let them be anywhere, as long as they have internet and they can download the app, they can log in and they will be ministered. It is part of the benefit of staying under this covenant. The Lord has empowered me for one-on-one -on -one counseling for families, a private counseling section for families, or you're coming with two or three families as part of it, amen? Then next Sunday, next Sunday, in the next seven days, we are going to be on this altar and we are dealing with another section. We are going to have it, have, be having another anointing service and what we are looking at is we are breaking bloodline and self-inflicted causes. We are breaking, the Lord has said to me throughout this month, 
Every Sunday, we are going to be ministering the anointing. So today, the Lord has destroyed the power of barrenness. Next Sunday, we are dealing with breaking bloodline and self-inflicted causes. I want you, when you are praying this week, be praying on it. And we are going to be praying on this on our prayer line on Thursday. Fasting we are doing on Thursday, we are going to be speaking and praying over this. For God to set us free from what we don't know that is fighting us. From our foundation, from our bloodline, or even some that we made mistake and put ourselves in it. That the Lord will set us free so that we will enjoy the blessings of his presence. God bless you. God bless you and have a glorious week ahead. Love you all and also happy Mother's Day again to the extraordinary ladies of King of Kings Global Church and every other mother out there, you are not alone. We wish you the best and we want to let you know that we love you and Jesus love you so much. And for our families watching online, we love you. God bless you. Mama, mama, ne, 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 mama. Yes. Mama, mama, ne, 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 mo, ne, mo, ma, ne, mo, jon, jon, obu, ne, mo, yes, uku, ka, jen, ne, mo, obu, ne, mo, yes, ne, mo, pu, kwa, ni, si, obu, ne, mo, ne, ne, mo, ne, mo, ma, ne, mo, ne, mo, ne, mo, ne, mo, Nemo, 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 mama, mama, nemo, 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 mama, mama, mama. provided refreshments and we are going to make sure that it goes through to everyone please sit back and uh, enjoy as soon as you get then you can be on your way god bless you